If you think you know Saudi, chances are you don't. Forget Riyadh, oil wells and wealth, and focus instead on ancient civilizations, which grew around an oasis valley, once a vital crossroads on incense trade routes. This is absolutely fascinating. Hello. Don't speak English. <laughs> Alula is a maze. Visiting here, a new experience, even for some Saudis. I don't think I fully appreciated how much of a revolution all this is. Change is here. No question about it. Is the change all good and all going in the right direction at all times? Absolutely not. So even when I look at this place with a skeptical, maybe even cynical view, you can't ignore the fact that millions of people in this country are living different lives because of the change. Change, yes. But this is Saudi, and let's be honest, oil money can buy change with superlative results. I give you Mariah. So you got this, and then you go around like this, and you go to here. <laughs> Richard, you've got to go to the desert and look at that building. Really? Why? Well, what's so special about it? It's almost infantile in the sense of it's just a mirror, but it's just clever. A concert hall designed to be at one with its background. For me, that's not the point. For me, the money has built something unique. An attraction that adds to what is here, rather than distorts it. Before I leave, I can't help myself. <laughs> Modern mirrored mirth gets me so far. I'm here for ancient architecture. Don't try this in the heat of the summer. Coming through, I'm gonna come back again. Standing by, please. Don't call this Petra, that's in Jordan. It's just extraordinary, knowing how difficult it must be. How old are these things again? How old are they again? These are the tombs of Hegra, constructed by the Nabataeans, dating back to the first century BC and part of a huge restoration project. Saudi scale and style, of course. These ruins were untouched for nearly 2,000 years. For archaeologists, this is the equivalent of a gold mine. So what we have here is what we call a standing stone circle. We believe they're Neolithic houses dating to about 7,000 years ago. How the hell do you find a wall like this? I mean, just look over there. I wouldn't even know where to. You have to learn to read the patterns of the rubble. <laughs> also a helicopter, it's very helpful. What do you want to know? Saudi Arabia is one of those, the last opportunities we have to, to find out something completely new about how humans became the people we are today. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Right, Finn, what are you looking for? Tell me what we've got going on. Right. right now, that so, looks to me like just a bunch of old rock. Well, you've got some stuff in there. Uh, it's a bit of bone. What? So you've got some animal bone there. How do you know? Oh, just... It's a bone. Lick it if you want to, that's a test. If, if it sticks to your tongue and it's sort of porous, that means it's bone because the rock won't, because it's bone solid. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. You proved it. Look, it won't go off! It go off! It's stuck! Someone pinch me. I can't believe I'm licking thousand-year-old animal bones. <laughs> <laughs> but then you'll spend a lot of time here saying, I can't believe. 
Today's Saudi change is being anchored in efforts to establish its true past. I think the word that best describes what I've seen is transform. From social to commercial to archaeological to everyday life, it seems everything is transforming. Make up your own mind. Riyadh and today's Saudi, joining our world of wonder.